right, Dave, I don't know if it's only me that finds it ironic that we're in Atlanta talking about cooling. It's raining today, though. So it is raining. So there's a there's a bit of liquid cooling going on here. Yes. In Atlanta, huh. Supercompute 2024. We're in the Lenovo booth talking AI at Supercompute 2024. I have with me representatives from both Lenovo and Sharon AI. I'm going to we 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 practiced the name before. I'm going to do the easy one first. Andrew. <laughs> I from thought you were going to lead with him. <laughs> <laughs> so you, you thought I was going to lead with <laughs> Shanesha. That's pretty good. That's pretty good. From, we'll do that. From, from Lenovo, Sharon, from, um, and from Sharon AI, Andrew. Andrew, sh tell us, what is Sharon AI? Uh, Sharon AI is uh, a leading GPU as a service provider in Australia. Uh, and, we've, and we've got expansion into the US in the very near future. Uh, so we've got full vertically integrated uh, infrastructure. Um, we've just signed a joint venture now uh, to build a 90 megawatt data center here in Texas. So talk to me about the differentiator for Sharon AI, because we're at Supercomputer. Every booth we go to, they're talking AI. What's the differentiator for Sharon AI? There's plenty of GPU providers around. Uh, we've we've built our infrastructure and optimized that for, for high performance computing. All of our customers from day one have been from this segment. They've been higher education and researchers. Uh, we, we are moving into enterprise and gov, but uh, you know, our background as a storage provider originally has, has all been uh, to, to service HPC segment. So Keith and I think in terms of the, uh, the stack often, yeah. both physical and logical. Yeah. Uh, first of all, GPU as a service, uh, do you have specific GPU partners that you only focus on? Or so, so what flavor GPUs? And then how high up in that abstraction stack do you go when delivering that as a service to your customers? Yeah, so to take the first point is around the, the GPU infrastructure. It's all uh, leading edge NVIDIA and AMD GPUs. Okay. Uh, so, you know, the predominant fleet that we have is is NVIDIA H100s, L40Ss, and soon to be H200s. Okay. Um, and in fact, uh, in partnership with Lenovo, we're, we're developing a full 1K uh, NVIDIA cluster uh, that'll be water cooled, direct to chip water cooled. Uh, but as far as uh, stack goes and abstraction away from the, the metal, uh, we, we've, got, uh, we've got solutions architects that are building and have built a, a library of, of tools specific to, to uh, research and higher ed uh, that, that will allow people to you know, one click run all sorts of different applications on our equipment. So as far as differentiation goes, we are moving further up the stack, but we, we, we stop at, at LLMs. We, we don't produce LLMs. We take uh, you know, open source LLMs, all private, so, you know, private LLMs, uh, and we can work with the end customer to optimize that for our equipment. Um, but for the most part, you know, we, we're taking pre-optimized uh, pre LLMs through N NVIDIA NIMS and, and alike uh, to run specifically on our hardware. So Cindy, talk to me about that special relationship. You're supporting many CSPs. How is Lenovo enabling this network of providers? Oh, we've been years now together as, as partners. So it started in storage, storage as a service, way back when, maybe three or four years ago plus, enabled by TrueScale as a offering technology that it allows operating, an operating expense world. So in the storage world, architecture, all of these things to enable DSS, which is what they were at the time, to go to market to offer these technologies to clients in terms of their expansion. With this whole jump into capacity and GPU as a service, then the acceleration began. Um, and one of the unique, I guess the unique value proposition of the way Lenovo works with its clients was, whilst this is a CSP offering as a service, we brought technology skills around HPC. 
Uh, we were at a HPC event today, Supercomputing 2024. So we brought those skills to bear as we're architecting, um, designing, consulting on what's coming, what's today and what's coming in the future. So Andrew touched on it just then. This growth in AI is driving sustainability, uh, related issues in data centers amongst other things. So now we're going to be progressing into water cooling, which is what you started with at the beginning. So there's all of those types of things that we do. Um, and to work with Sharon AI, the way they verticalize their business is a true value differentiator in the market. And for us, it's, it's quite exciting to work in that space versus uh, what I would say is like a bare metal, uh, a bare metal as a service infrastructure. Working with them, this verticalization and going to clients that way is, is completely and utterly unique in the market. Yeah. So if I'm, if, if I'm a, uh, kind of an, an individual enterprise data center customer yep. uh, or a cloud service provider, I can engage Lenovo and I can say, I want to buy a server. I yeah. want to buy some storage, right? Yeah. Or I can uh, get to that sort of rack scale level where I'm buying things designed that way. What, is the, what does that relationship look like between Sharon and Lenovo? Um, are, are you buying things that are designed at the rack scale? Are you buying at the component level? What, what does that look like, it, Sinisha? It sort of starts off at the base level, right? Which is, what do we want to do? What do you want to do? Where is the capacity going? Um, what is the architectural design point that you want? So, are we H200s? Are we moving into Blackwell? Are we talking MI300? What is the client aspect of it? Where are we going to market? How are you going to go to market with that? Um, we then work very closely with Andrew's architecture team and our architecture team to actually design that. And when you're going into these heavy cloud based environments, network becomes very important, how many leafs you have, all, all, all sorts of things, the way the system hangs together. Because always in this business, you have to have an, an end, sort of an end point or a horizon position so that you're not just doing a lump here, oh, now I have to re-architect and go on. You're always designing for the fact that you can integrate as quickly as possible because the market dynamics are such that they're move, moving very quickly and Andrew and the team need capacity on the floor sometimes incredibly quickly. So you don't want to go through a re-architecture. So we're always continually looking at that advancement, but hand in hand with Andrew and his architecture team. Yeah, I would, I would just add to that is that obviously, you know, we, we started out as buying uh, the individual component level, but now we've very quickly progressed to building uh, whole 1K reference architecture clusters. And we can still deliver that in stages, but what is, uh, what, what is engineered from day one with uh, NVIDIA and Lenovo is the, is the network infrastructure. Because the network infrastructure is critical to deliver the optimum performance of, of the equipment. You know, there are a lot of people out there buying just individual boxes, and we started that way too. Um, and, but then that doesn't deliver the, the, the full potential of, of, of that environment. So the network layer is critical. And so right now we've got two 1K cluster designs that, that we're implementing or in, in final design stages. Uh, and whilst we might start with 256 GPUs in that cluster, we, we develop the, the whole spine and leaf architecture for the network on day one. And that allows us to deliver, even with only, 250, only 256 <laughs> nodes, uh, uh, the optimum performance out of that equipment. So we've talked about the, the transformation that happened at Sharon AI, going from a storage provider into kind of this AI uh, service provider model. Those are two very different types of workloads. Like, you, you know, I, you need to scale for storage and uh, serving up storage latency that may not matter as much. Now we're talking about moving our AI to the data, moving our data to the AI, you already have the data. Talk to me about how TrueScale has enabled this transition. Yeah, so TrueScale has enabled us to scale in a very capital efficient manner um, and do so in a very responsive manner as well. 
So, you know, obviously we want to have infrastructure on the ground on a just-in-time basis. We don't want latent equipment hanging around, especially in the, in the compute space at you know, significant expense per, per GPU. Uh, so, Lenovo, as a, as a TrueScale customer, um, may, maybe I'm not allowed to say, but I believe there is a, a, you know, a, a preferential delivery schedule because there is a commitment to have X amount of... He just said it. Yeah, yeah he, he did just say it. I, 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 I thought I was the only one. Continue, continue. Yes, please. Continue. Tell us, tell but, us the secrets. Yeah, well... <laughs> it's because we love Sharon AI. <laughs> there's, there's a contractual requirement on Lenovo's part to have X amount of uh, capacity available to us at all times. And so, you know, we might push that boundary sometimes and say, hey, that X amount of capacity was actually X plus. Um, and, there's, and there's always been a great commitment on behalf of, of Lenovo to deliver that. Um, so capital efficiency and, and, and availability, and then even uh, you know, services to, to install. You know, if we're deploying in a, in a remote location or remote to our headquarters, uh, then, then there are services available for us to actually do the deployments. But I did want to just come back to your point around the transition from data storage to compute. Uh, yes, you know, uh, architecturally they, they are different. Um, you know, the, the workloads that we're experiencing are the same. We're just participating in both parts of, of that workload. And bringing compute to the data uh, has been, has been a, a really complementary, you know, a, well, now skill set, but, uh, but pr proposition to our customers. Because as we know, data, the data management is, is one of the most difficult and costly components of, of these operations. So bringing data to compute is often very expensive. Um, in many cases, there are sovereignty issues associated with that. So you need to bring compute to the data. Uh, and, and having the data management skills uh, and capabilities within our team has been enormously valuable to our compute customers. So talk to us about the future. If you had a crystal ball, it'd probably be wrong because this, this is AI, but talk to us about how you're thinking about the future of sharing AI. Yeah, our 90 megawatt uh, data center joint venture that we've just done probably is going to be too small in three weeks. But, uh, you know, we, you know we're, we're circa two and a half megawatts uh, come uh, following our next deployment in, in terms of compute and storage capacity. Uh, you know, so we have a significant expansion capacity um, here in the US as well as in Australia. And we, we have all of our operations in tier three or tier four data centers. They're in Equinix and Next DC data centers. Uh, so, you know, we offer a genuine enterprise service, le service level. Um, and we, continue, we expect to continue to do that even with our own vertically integrated data centers. Um, but, you know, the, the future is, is unknown. I mean, the, the product life cycle of, of the GPUs uh, is, is, in, you know, is probably speeding up. Um, there are advancements in CPU as well. We're not, we're not limited to, to GPU. We have large CPU arrays as well for our customers. So, you know, we're, but we're just excited uh, about those advancements. We, we stay at the forefront of all of those. You know, we, we solve a lot of problems for our, our customers. You know, a lot of the university customers that, that we work with, um, you know, they might have budget to go and buy a handful of these. Um, but, you know, two or three nodes doesn't give you the opportunity that, that several hundred nodes gives you in terms of throughput and, and, uh, and, and raw horsepower. Uh, but one of the big problems, as we know, is, is density and power availability. And a lot of the universities you know, are capping out their, their on-prem capacity, even their right. data center partners, you know, aren't are struggling to respond quickly enough to, to density requirements. Well, well Sadisha, you're working with companies all over the world. Yeah. Um, and do you, do you see a difference between the constraints on power in Australia versus North America, or is it, it's or is the, it the same everywhere? It, it's literally the same. There's just different levels of it. Um, when you see these next generation systems, they run hot, they spin fast, they run hot. Um, everyone's worried about climate change, cost of power, you have to cool these things. The hotter things run, the more unreliable, I guess you want to get them, cooler things. As you cool things, reliability increases, 
you get rid of CPU jitter, all, all, all these other things. The, the performance curve in the direct water cooled environment goes up, flat lines, yes. and it comes down again. In the, in the air cooled, you, you get the, the performance jitter. Right? You, you get this performance jitter, the yeah. CPU jitter that, uh, that jumps around. So the future that we've been talking about, that you spoke about, is around water cooling, direct water cooling. And we have our technologies actually on the stand today. And you can see it on the web. Neptune. <laughs> boom, boom. <laughs> Neptune. Um, but when you start looking at that, that's where things really change. It's when things escalate uh, in terms of what you can put on the floor, the density that we were talking about to deliver that type of capacity to, to Sharon AI's clients. That's where the world changes. And we're seeing that everywhere through Europe, Middle East, North America, Asia Pacific. That's the change. You, you can't do it anymore. So Sunisha, Andrew, thank you so much for stopping by 6.5 on the road. I'm Keith Townsend for my host, co-host Dave Nicholson. We want to encourage you to continue to explore this fascinating world of supercomputers. We continue our coverage throughout the week here in Atlanta.